Thank you for joining me in the History of Science Collections of the University of Oklahoma Libraries. Let's look at a few treasures from the vault that throw light on the story of science in the Roman Empire up through the second century CE. The Roman Empire was bilingual, with Latin spoken in the West and Greek spoken in the East. Let's consider three Greek and three Latin writers to represent early Roman science. Hero of Alexandria, Cicero and Lucretius in the first century BCE, Pliny the Elder in the first century CE, and we'll conclude with Galen and Ptolemy in the second century CE. Hero of Alexandria can represent Roman accomplishments in physics and technology. Hero fashioned all sorts of marvelous machines or miraculous devices using steam, air pressure, hydraulics, and falling weights. For example, once an altar would be lighted, the temple doors would open automatically. That's a really cool stage trick. Cicero's On the Nature of the Gods was one of the most important works of Roman natural philosophy. In this book, fictional representatives of Stoic, Epicurean, and Neoplatonic philosophical schools engage in a dialogue on natural order, religion, and the gods. Cicero's own Stoic natural philosophy became one of the most influential schools of science for the development of science in later centuries. Stoic natural philosophy rejected Aristotle's dichotomy between the heavens and the sublunar realms, asserting instead that the same reason and laws govern all of the universe. The heavens were no longer made of a fifth element, but ether became understood rather as a more pure form of the fourth element, fire, which circulates between the heavens and the sublunar regions. Consequently, Stoics believed the celestial spheres are fluid, not solid, made of fire, not a crystalline fifth element. Therefore, the fixed stars and planets swim through the ether as fish swim through the sea. This is On the Nature of Things by the poet Lucretius in the edition published by Aldus in 1515. Lucretius fused the atomic theory of Democritus and Leucippus with the philosophy of Epicurus in order to argue against the existence of the gods. While ordinary humans might fear the thunderbolts of Jove or torments in the underworld after death, Lucretius advised his readers to take courage in the knowledge that death is merely a dissolution of the body as atoms combine and reassemble according to chance as they move through the void. On the Nature of Things was frequently reprinted. Against the Stoics, Aristotelians, and Neoplatonists, Lucretius argued for a mechanistic universe governed by chance. He also argued for a plurality of worlds and contended that planets like the Earth need not be spherical. Lucretius' work was almost universally admired as a masterful example of Latin style, even by those who rejected his arguments. Pliny the Elder's Natural History defined the scope and breadth of the field of natural history. Natural history means the description, or historia, of nature, as opposed to explaining its causes. To explain the causes would be natural philosophy. Pliny died in 79 CE while investigating the eruption of Mount Vesuvius that buried Pompeii. Ptolemy and Galen represent the culmination of ancient mathematical astronomy and ancient anatomy and medicine. Galen brought together the ideas in anatomy and physiology of Hippocrates, Herophilus, and Aristotle, and cast medicine as an endeavor of natural philosophy. He drew upon his own experience in the dissection and vivisection of animals and encouraged his readers to gain similar experience for themselves. Because the earlier Alexandrian physicians had vivisected humans, the Romans prohibited human dissection out of ethical concern. Galen did the next best thing for medical education, perhaps, by becoming a physician to the gladiators. 
Galen's writings were to ancient medicine what Ptolemy's Almagest became to ancient astronomy, a synthesis so comprehensive and compelling that many of the sources he drew upon ceased to be read and did not survive. Claudius Ptolemy worked in Alexandria in the second century. Although best known for his astronomy, Ptolemy brought the same mathematical methods to bear on various topics in optics, geography, and astrology. This is the first printed edition of Ptolemy's geography, which established mathematical methods in cartography. This is the first edition of Ptolemy's Almagest, which synthesized and extended the accomplishments of ancient Greek and Babylonian mathematical astronomy. Ptolemy's book was titled Almagest, which means the greatest, by its Arabic translators. Ptolemy's Almagest was the culmination of ancient mathematical astronomy, achieving an unparalleled degree of accuracy in quantitative predictions of the positions of the planets. This little treatise by Ptolemy, the Tetrabiblos or Quadripartium, was the most popular work of astrology in antiquity. The Tetrabiblos is of immense significance because astrology provided the context in which mathematical astronomy was pursued in antiquity up through the early modern period. This edition made use of a previously unknown manuscript and was issued by a printer associated with Kepler at the time when Kepler was serving in Prague as the court astrologer to Rudolf II. Far from being merely an exercise in calculation, the exacting discipline of mathematical astronomy was a religious enterprise. Ptolemy wrote, I know that I am mortal and living but a day, yet when I search for the numerous turning spirals of the stars, I no longer have my feet on the earth, but am beside Zeus himself, filling myself with God-nurturing ambrosia. Through astronomy, one might tune one's soul to the harmony of the heavenly motions. Science is a story. What stories do you want to hear and tell about science in the early Roman era?